Hold on, hold on. What? Our day is not over just yet. Woohoo! USA! USA! We have an action packed hour for you 6 p.m. drivers. Would I rather be feared or loved? Easy, both. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. Matt Scraby wraps up a full day of live and local sports talk. And that is the whole problem with aliens. You just can't trust them. Occasionally you meet a nice one, but usually they turn out to be some kind of big lizard. <laughs> The Scraby Show starts now on 97.3 The Fan. Hello and welcome to everybody into The Scraby Show. April 18th, 2024. Hope you enjoyed the roundtable brought to you by Roundtable. I gotta say, I'm getting used to all this pizza coming into studio. Let me tell you. I uh, actually didn't take part today uh, because I'm still trying to kind of keep my weight down not not even trying to keep my weight down i am keeping my weight down because you know i went through that sd fat loss thing but it was uh hard to walk by all that pizza gotta say i really really have to say it was hard to walk by all that pizza i'm a big round table guy i'm a big uh, supreme guy and there was plenty of that today there were also like cinnamon sticks bread sticks wings salad getting hungry all over again let me tell you Hungry all over again. All right. Uh, if you want to follow the show or if you want to watch it on YouTube, you can just go to YouTube, search 97.3 The Fan. You can also watch on Facebook through the 97.3 The pa- Fan page, Twitch, uh, 97.3 The Fan, and X, 97.3 The Fan SD. Uh, Katrina, hello. Rafa, hello. Matt, I'm sorry. You were in the other chat room. Okay. I should explain this. So. So many people, so many great people signed up and subscribed for the Scraby Show YouTube. And I should explain a little bit as to what needs to happen throughout the week and and why I'm going to be using that other YouTube. So when I'm doing a show for the station like this one right here for 97.3 The Fan, uh, I'm going to be interacting on the 97.3 The Fan YouTube. And so that's where you can go and comment and see everybody there. But the Scraby Show YouTube is actually going to be for some of the little video projects that I do. Also, it's going to be as soon as they let me, because I've got I I, I have checked off all the boxes for live streaming. But I am going to start live streaming on the Scraby Show here and there, because at times I'm not going to be able to get to do this show much. So uh, if you go to YouTube and you type in the Scraby Show, just uh, subscribe if you want. You can alert yourself, but um, it just started. It literally, I just put it up. Maybe, I mean, I've had it for a little bit, but I just started putting work into it here recently. But I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing um, seeing all of you all season on on YouTube on Instagram. I did an Instagram chat the other day from the dog park, which was really fun. So I'm gonna try to do more of that, trying to get more people, you know talk to more people all right let's go to the roll call and we're gonna start with rafa was first sd yeg uh castro joseph anthony mckee 20 and mckee 23 matt gonzo dave mailman rob and we got katrina we got uh, brandon checking in for the roll call maria is here uh jeremy is here katie is here so we got a lot of people going on here in the youtube to start the day now i will say this about where we're going to go with the show because i know the xander bogart's chatter is off the charts right now it's through the roof as they say and i know we're all getting kind of tired of talking about xander bogart's and i know here on the station we've been talking about xander bogart's all day long but when I was thinking about what I want to talk about tonight, I uh, was looking through my my DMs and I or my replies on Twitter, and I got a reply about the cheering for Bogarts on Friday. And if you haven't heard, uh, there's a, a growing movement on social media to when Xander Bogarts has his first at bat tomorrow night against the Blue Jays, that the stadium should give him a standing ovation to show him that they support him and fans are behind him, which I think is great. I do. And I've been, you know, I've said in the past that standing ovations aren't the worst thing in the world. I feel like people are, I I feel like people really, um, I I think that they're maybe taking it a little bit too serious. And, and I'm talking about the standing ovation because I've, I've had responses. I've had, uh, you know, replies 
and direct messages of people saying, why are we doing this for a guy who makes a ton of money? Again, you heard Tony on the round table say it. Why do we care how much money he makes? And I know that it's, uh, I know that it is kind of cutting into how they can build the team by play or paying money for him. But Xander Bogarts is one of the better players of the last decade in baseball. And so I went into a deep, deep dive on Xander Bogarts and other players who start the season not so good. So I'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, it's going to go over what happened last year, guys this year that are struggling. And my goal is not to make you... Uh, it, my goal is not to try to change your mind. My goal is just to try to help. My goal is for you to see my mindset. Cause maybe that will change. Maybe you'll think about certain aspects of this a little bit different. Xander Bogarts, I think is going to be just fine. We talked about that a lot today, so we will get into that in a little bit. Uh, we got some hockey on TV right now. I love the Kraken. I'm not a huge NHL fan, but I will watch the NHL playoffs. Uh, they're not there yet, but the Kraken, cool team i gotta say we have more people checking in now on the chat jeremy is here i think i said that uh let's see dues chris <laughs> some of these names patrick and annie rod you are not chopped liver rod dominic j mac trevor chad I'm, i can keep going i i'm gonna miss someone so if i missed you i'm sorry jennifer hi everyone first time in the chat thank you jennifer feel right at home Chad says, I'll be there in my Jays gear and I'll still be standing for Xander tomorrow. I like that. I really do. Trevor says, X-Man is a quasi all-star. Mikey says, love your show, man. Thank you, Mikey. You guys are also nice. Anyway. All right. So the, uh, I guess I'll get into it. I'll, I'll start with this because Trey Turner last year struggled leading up to the time that his fans actually uh, stood up and gave him a standing ovation last year. And then after that, he went, uh, he went on a tear. So August 4th last year, after he got the standing ovation, Trey Turner would go on to get, have the second highest slugging percentage in major league baseball among qualified hitters from August 4th to the end of the season. So he was, he had a slugging percentage of 668, which is pretty darn good. And from the, the start of last season to August 3rd, here is his, her, these are what he was hitting 235 and he had an OPS of 637. So during that stretch, after the standing ovation, Trey Turner hit 337, had a 1.057 ERA. He had 42 RBIs, 16 home runs, hit a triple, 14 doubles, all in 193 at bats. Now, here is why. Yes, Rafa, Xander has struggled for like two weeks. But this is what I'm trying to say, is that this is not anything new in baseball. This is not anything that we haven't seen before. And I even went back to see if Tony Gwynn at any point in his career struggled as much as Xander's been struggling so far to start the year. And again, we're only through like 20 games or 21 games. But in 1988, from April 30th, or I'm sorry, April 29th through June 10th of 1988, Tony Gwynn Sr. hit 184 over that time. He had 76 at-bats, and this was a bad stretch for him. This was one of the worst stretches for him. But what I can say, and what the guys notified me earlier, because I didn't put it together yet, Tony Gwynn, who started the year hitting 184, Ended up winning the batting title. So that's why I think we need to chill out a little bit on Xander Bogarts. I does it does it frustrate me to see him hit into ground or ground into double plays all the time? Yeah, it really frustrates me. Serious. But at the same time, we got to give the guy a little bit more time. He is someone, and I hate. I, I don't hate the term, look at the back of their baseball card, but I understand, A, why it's said, and B, why people don't really like to hear that. Because right now, he is not hitting on the back. He's not living up to what the back of his baseball card says. And that's 
the, all of those stats, by the way, are over a full season, as everybody knows. They don't put the stats on there from the first two weeks of the season. And I, I, I think that Xander Bogarts is, you know, he's a guy that I've seen working on the field. And now when I say this stuff, I, I get I get my own head because we had someone earlier calling us. Uh, we were gaslighting everyone for telling everyone everything's OK with the Padres. But I have seen the guy work and he does work very hard and it, it will turn around. I have full faith that it will turn around. And it also, again, for Tony Gwynn Sr., it happened again in a 20-game stretch or 71 at-bats in 1998, the year that they went to the World Series. From June 28th through July 22nd in 1998, Tony Gwynn Sr. hit 197. In 1991, from July 5th through July 30th in 1991, he hit 195. So one of the greatest hitters in baseball history, history, uh, still had stretches where he struggled mightily. And I'm comparing, okay, B Free 619 says, stop comparing X to Tony. I am not comparing the two. I am just using it as further proof that baseball has had, have, you've seen great hitters struggle to the point where Xander Bogarts is struggling. I'm not, I am not saying that Xander Bogarts is Tony Gwynn, but what I am saying is every baseball player goes through it. Every baseball player goes through it. Uh, the contract Rafa says was def definitely bad. Not his fault though. I do want to say that the contract thing, that comment does like irk me a little bit because if someone offered me, uh, you know, the money that they're offering Xander Bogarts. What am I going to say? No. Everybody's going to say yes. So don't be mad at Xander Bogarts for how much money he's making. Be mad at the team for offering him that contract. All that guy had to do was, you know, say yes to the contract. I really am thinking uh, th this this part of it does bother me. Because you're you're acting like Xander Bogarts is stealing the money from the team. The team actually gave him that money. Ken says, I believe with Xander is a bit of the Eric Hosmer hangover. Please don't be the next Eric Cosmer. I agree with that. I do. I do. Um, in, in this way. That the Eric Hosmer hangover. I know that Eric Hosmer... And I saw this point a few times earlier on X. And while Eric Hosmer was here it was known that he wasn't really doing anything to like change his swing, change his approach, things like that. And so I feel like Eric Hosmer, we cannot get caught up in the Eric Hosmer past, the ghost of Eric Hosmer's past. We cannot get caught up in that because Xander Bogarts is a completely different guy. I mean, I think the biggest case in point about Xander Bogarts that should show you that he's a team guy and that he wants to be here working hard is that Xander Bogart switched to second base in spring training after he'd been training to be a shortstop all season long, or all off season long. And you know what he did? He did it with a smile, even though you could tell that he wasn't happy about it. And to me, that is why I'm willing to give him a month, a month and a half, maybe even two months because of selflessness, so, because of selfless things like that. He did what was best for the team. The team came to him and said, Hey, we think we will win more if uh, Hassan Kim is at shortstop and you're at second base. And I remember playing that audio of him. I remember when he was like, I knew this was coming one day, but I didn't know it was going to come today. I didn't know it was going to come this quick. And he said they had talked about it over the offseason. But he went right over to second base. And he put the frustration of having to move to second base in the rear view mirror. And he did what was best for the team. Diesel, just take him off leadoff and let him see some pitches before stepping up to the plate. I think they're going to keep him at – I think that they're going to keep him in the leadoff spot for quite some time. I think they're going to really uh, – they're going to give this a good go. He deserves it. He's a, he's a longtime veteran in baseball. He absolutely deserves us giving him a go. Rafa says Hosmer is a blank for not going on SD Sports Radio. Sorry, not sorry. 
He did go on SD Sports Radio. He came on our show a couple times. More than a couple times. But I will agree that, you know, there were some times when he should have maybe talked to the fans and he didn't. But this isn't an, an um this is not an Eric Hosmer conversation. So all right. Let us get to break. And when we get back, I'm gonna go through my research. And please stick with me because I went through, re- I did a lot of research on this research. And so we'll talk about Xander Bogarts. We'll talk about more of the Padres and we'll see. I have a couple phone calls. We'll see what you guys want. So stick with me. This is a Scraby show. Thanks for listening on 97.3 The Fan.
Back here, Odyssey Palace, 97.3 The Fan. The phones are lively here in the break. I'm not going to repeat what one person said because she uh, was swearing a lot. And I know that she's listening right now, so it's hilarious. But thank you for calling. And thanks to everybody in the chat room. Now, we have more questions about whether or not... I didn't really think about this being a, a confusion point, but it is kind of a, a confusion point because I have two... Uh, I'm broadcasting two different places now. I'm doing Scraby Show and 97.3 The Fan. Um, but what I would say is you can comment wherever you want. And the one thing I will say about that, though, if you're in one chat over the other, you won't see all of the chats. So I will say when I'm doing a show here on the station, 97.3 The Fan is the chat that you're going to you're want to be in, the uh, video that you're going to want to be in. So uh, the Scraby show is going to be for separate stuff, but maybe I should stop broadcasting to both places and making it confusing. Didn't really think that through, everyone. Didn't really think that through. Uh, but I can reply to both. I just know that you can't see both. So I'm going to do some more research on that and figure it out. Uh, I was joking about the callers in the break, but one of the callers, um, she was saying, you know, give it a break. Give Xander a break. He'll be fine. And here's why. And I'm going to do something different on the video because I put together like a graphic thing. But I wanted to see. I wanted to see uh, uh, four different players. Well, I wanted to see which players around baseball right now are not hitting well and are not really carrying their weight in regards to how much they're paid. So the hitters that I found are not hitting well right now are pretty, pretty noticeable. And everybody knows who they are. So the first hitter right now that is struggling and is getting paid a lot of money is Cody Bill uh, Cody Ballinger? Yes, he's hitting only 200. So Xander Bogarts is hitting 200 well as well. Matt Chapman of the Giants is hitting 208 right now, so he's struggling. Francisco Lindor actually kind of started this whole uh, standing ovation thing off earlier this year because Mets fans were did it for him because he was hitting under 100. Now he's up to 151, so I guess he's making his way up. But he's also struggling and he's getting paid a ton of money. And then it is Aaron Judge, the final one that I found on this list. Aaron Judge, I got to zoom in on my, I got to look closer, but he's hitting 183 right now. And it's, I mean, Aaron Judge is one of the best hitters in the last 10 years, last five years for sure. But those guys are also struggling. So if you look at these guys, it's like, you, you kind of just, it, to me, when I saw this earlier this morning, I didn't know, this is my deep dive th stuff. I didn't know where it was going to go. Is it going to tell me that Xander Bogarts is actually really bad at baseball? Or is it going to tell me that he's actually fine? And what this tells me is that he's actually fine. Because Cody Bellinger's making a ton of money. Matt Chapman's making a ton of money. Francisco Lindor's making a ton of money. Aaron Judge is making a ton of money. SD Yeg on the chat also gives me a great stat. Xander has a 290 career average. All four of those guys, uh, there's only Matt Chapman's the only one who's hitting, uh, who has a better batting average than Xander Bogarts at 208. And that's not much better. So those are four big names that I wanted to give you to kind of show you that, yes, it does happen. Now, I want to go through last year, and here are some of the other names on the list, but I didn't include them because they weren't as, uh, you know, the names weren't as big, but we have Glaber Torres is hitting 208. Josh Bell, we're familiar with, hitting 200. Um, J.P. Crawford hitting 171. So some pretty decent names on that list right now. Now, here is where I want to go with the next part of this Sander Bogarts things, thing. Because, and I need to get my next little stat thing up. But Xander Bogarts last year, and this surprised me. This really did surprise me. Xander Bogarts was top five in everything Padres related last year. And we know that he struggled throughout the season and he struggled in the middle part of the season. He was injured. So think about that too. Xander Bogarts was injured last year and he still ended up with some team leading stats. And that's on a team with Juan Soto, Manny Machado and Fernando Tatis Jr. So let's see here. 
The first one is he was the number two on the team last year in games played. So he, the only person who played more games than Xander Bogarts last year, Juan Soto. I don't, I know that this doesn't really, you can't really measure this, but availability is huge. And if he is able to play the number two, most games on the team, uh, he's, he's working for his money there. He had the most at bats on the team. He had the most hits on the team last year. He had, he was number three in doubles last year. He was number two in triples on the team last year. He was number four in home runs last year. He was uh, fifth being struck out, but Grish, Tatis, Soto, and Kim all struck out more than Xander Bogarts last year. This one really shocked me. He was the number three player on the team last year in stolen bases. So I, I did not expect for that to happen. He was the number one. He was the team leading batting average last year for the Padres at 285. He was number three in on base percentage, number four in slugging, and number two in OPS. So all of those stats, all of those very, very, very important stats, Xander Bogarts was in the top five of the team last year. And if you want to talk about the money, then there are plenty of other guys on that team that weren't playing for their money. So I, Rod says, how many double plays did he hit into? I, I, you know, the double play thing, I told you, it frustrates me to no end. It really frustrates me. And double plays, I can't excuse, really, honestly. I can't excuse it at all because it's, um, it's just a rally killer. And, and it was something that happened a lot yesterday during that game a couple times they had some guys on double play ends it but i hope you enjoyed the deep dive on xander bogarts it actually wasn't as deep of a dive as i thought it was going to be but i did uh want to pass that along to everyone because you know it's something that i forget quite often and i've told you this many times here on the scraby show scrabinators you know this I am not a patient person and I'm trying really hard with baseball to be patient because I am not built for a baseball season. And I don't necessarily think any of us are built for a baseball season, but people who have been around baseball for a long time are going to do that thing where you tell them people are struggling and they're going to give you an eye roll. I'm not really getting there for an eye roll. Um, I am I, I I don't think I can ever eye roll someone, but I'm getting to the point where it's like, yeah, it is only two weeks. It is only three weeks. It is only 20 games. And so I'm going to give it a little bit more, give it a little bit more of um, patience. I need patience. I need to go meditate. I don't know if anyone meditates out there. I'm sure there's people meditate out there, but I have meditated in the past. It's not as easy as you would think it was, but I'm closing my eyes on the camera right now and I'm talking because I want to meditate. Because I think everybody out there should just take a second to take a step back from life and realize that Xander Bogart's hitting 200 in the first 20 games of the 21 games of the season is not a big deal. Not a big deal. Zach found the stat for me on the ground, grounding into double plays. Unfortunately, he had 21 for him last year, most in his career, but he's a career 290 hitter in the leadoff spot, including this year. If he's still struggling by the all-star break, might be time to change. Yeah, I, I can agree. The all-star break, they're probably playing around 70, 80 games at that point. Hey, Chris and Tony told me that 70 games is where when I can start complaining. So I still got a ways to go. I still got like 49 to go. Ah, here's another good one. Xander has been hit by 53 pitches. So he's also getting on base that way. I just want everybody out there. You can feel the way you can, you want to feel you can fan the way you want to fan, but on Friday and the, the, again, the standing ovation, and then we're going to move on from Xander Bogarts and go to break. And then we'll talk about something else, but the standing ovation for Xander Bogarts. I don't care if you do it. I don't care if you don't do it. Just don't be a jerk and tell someone else, you know, not to do it. Because I see quite a bit of that on social media. People saying they're going to do the whole standing ovation thing. Someone says, why is that That's so stupid? Why would you ever do that? You can't tell fans how to fan, and then they go and tell fans how to fan. Same people. Same people. I don't know. <laughs> Gonzo says, still have 
2,529 complaints to go. You're absolutely absolutely right. Even uh, Annabelle says, even I think it's going to be fine, and I'm a catastrophist. Yes. Catastrophe. Catastrophists are not good for baseball. Trust me. Trust me. A couple years ago, the guys would make fun of me every day because I would be panicked about everything. But we can't panic. It's way too early. Gonzo says, I don't know about the standing ovation. It doesn't matter. Why does it bother you? I don't understand. It's like um, there was someone in the chat earlier that was like talking about our show and how we're gaslighters and that we're the biggest homers on radio in San Diego. And it's like, I, I don't understand why you just don't listen. That's what I do. When I see a bad Netflix show, I just turn it off and I move on with my day. But I don't know. I, I'm not trying to complain or anything. It just is kind of kind of crazy sometimes. Kind of crazy. Uh, let's see. Rod says, let's do it, San Diego. What do we have to lose? <laughs> SDX says, I'm a scrab a fist. I don't even know what that means. All right. That's it for Xander Bogarts. Thank you for letting me do my deep dive. I did look for more numbers on like MVPs and I went back and looked at Ted Williams and things like that. But uh, honestly, Ted Williams didn't have a stretch like Xander Bogarts did. Ted Williams was that good. He was that good. All right. <laughs> Lucy's in the chat. She's the cusser girl, she says. Yes, she does cuss. Anyway, when we get back, we are going to go through some of the different guys that are um, doing what 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 the prospects are doing down in the minor leagues. We'll get an update on them. We'll get an update on Graham Pauly. We'll get an update on Jacob Marcy. And we'll just kind of talk about those guys because they are the future of the team. We've already exhausted everything today with the roundtable with Ben and Woods, Annie and Nelson, Gwen and Chris. So we will finish up with some nice prospect talk here on the Scraby Show on 97.3 The Fan.
Final segment of The Scraby Show. Thank you to everyone who has listened. Thank you to everyone who has chatted with me and giving me your opinion because I need some of that sometimes. Sorry, I, I uh, kind of forgot where I was going with that. It's been kind of a long day. Hope you enjoyed everything that we uh, gave today on the station. And we are going to give you another 15 minutes of good sports talk. I was looking through some of the minor league updates and there's some good stuff. There's some bad stuff. So everybody struggles guys. Remember Wu suck go. Remember him. Padres thought he was going to be someone that was going to handle important innings in the majors. Well, in four appearances uh, in double double a San Antonio, he is, has a 5.40 ERA. However, he did pick up his first save the last time out they say uh let's see other guys grand Pauly, triple a el paso now i was one who said that grand Pauly would be better off in el paso for right now at least for right now but grand Pauly's the number eight prospect in the system he has three homers and only seven games since he was sent down from the big leagues uh, on april 9th he's got two barrels and he's only one off the team lead so that's that's great I love it when you see a guy get sent down and he continues to produce because that is a sign of someone who's really able to turn it around. Who's really, or not turn it around. Who's really able to focus on what they need to do and get back to it as quick as possible. Now I'm not saying this about Graham Pauly, but it is interesting that he struggles a lot in the major league level, but triple a seems to be a little bit easier for him. So Hopefully he can get that major league level figured out. And I think he will utility infielder clay Dungan. I haven't heard about him, but he was picked up from the Royals in the minor league portion of the rule five draft. He shares the team lead in triple a El Paso with three barrels and he's slugging five sixty three. So we'll see about that. If they need another infielder, uh, Jeremiah Estrada right-hander. He did pitch for the Padres in Korea. He's throwing in the high nineties, according to this report, and struck out eleven of the twenty-one batters he's faced. I should actually tell you where I'm getting this from. This is the Padres beat by AJ Castavell. I think it's Sean O'Neill is filling in for AJ right now, so that he went through all of this. Uh, a name that we talked about quite a bit in spring training, Jacob Marcy is batting one forty through forty-three at bats. So not having the Arizona Fall League type performance so far at Double A San Antonio, but you know what? He showed a lot in spring training, and I figure he's going to be able to figure that out some point soon. Uh, First baseman Nathan Martarella, he's the number 13 prospect. He is the only real hot hitter on the double A San Antonio team, slashing 385 and has an OP, or he's hitting 385. He has an OPS of 1.0. Oh, here comes math 1.013, and he has more walks than strikeouts. So good there. Right-hander Adam Major. I think we're going to see Adam Major sooner rather than later because he's doing too well in the minor leagues. He's got a .82 ERA through two starts. Tony really liked him, I remember, when uh, we were talking about that. Um, We were talking about Adam Major and whether or not he was going to make the major league team, and he was a, a fan of Major. So, there are some guys out there that are ready to come up to the big league level, I think, if they need them to. Now, Dylan Lesko has allowed only one hit in high Fort Wayne in seven innings across two starts, but he has walked seven uh, so far this season. So there you go. Dylan Lesko kind of struggling with control. Homer Bush Jr., he, is, uh, he had five steals in 10 games for Fort Wayne. And then some of the other names, uh, you know, they're a little bit of a ways off from making the big league club. So there you go with your minor league report. Let's go equals Snell. Brandon says, let's see. Logan Gillespie. Oh yeah. He's the guy, you know, I I'm going to be honest with you that I didn't really look into him today. Cause I did so much research into Xander Bogarts, but with you Darvish on the IL, they're going to need to do something. I don't believe they've announced a pitcher for Saturday yet. Let me go make sure that's true before I say that, because I, I'm not sure what they're going to do with the rotation here with you Darvish on the IL. Maybe they do call someone up. Maybe they do a bullpen game on Saturday. But if you think Joe Musgrove, 
he went he pitched monday so you got tuesday wednesday thursday friday and saturday is five days and they have the off day there so i i think it could be joe musgrove but i'm not seeing that they have uh announced a pitcher yet and as soon as i say that someone's gonna find it and be like hey dummy they did announce the pitcher that's their voice but they're gonna have to face barrios on uh saturday against the blue jays no still says tbd all right dario says scraby your show is good but last year's stats for padres did not make the playoffs yes i understand that dario and it's not a bad thought the reason i brought up last year's stats is because i'm saying on a bad team or on a uh, on a team that didn't succeed like we thought they were going to succeed xander bogart's led the way in a lot of those stats that's why i brought that up i wanted people to hear Last year, because when I saw this, I had to double take it. He led the team in batting average last year. So I really think we should. Uh, we've already talked about Xander Bogers. We'll, we'll move forward. We'll move forward. Uh, around baseball, there's not much going on tonight. And Logan Webb is just about to get underway. Uh, Paul Skeens, if you know anything about Paul Skeens, he is in the Pittsburgh Pirates system. He was the number one overall pick. He's the number three overall prospect, but he had eight strikeouts and he actually uh, only had one hit and two walks over three and a third innings against AAA St. Paul. So Paul Skeens is going to be in the big league soon. That was the guy who got ranked ahead of Jackson Merrill. Come on now. Come on. He doesn't even made a, a pitch at the major league level and he's already ranked ahead of Jackson Merrill. So we'll see Paul Skeens sooner rather than later. I'm trying to see if there's any you Darvish news because I saw in the chat there may be, but I'm not seeing it. So we will not go with the you Darvish news. He's just got a sore neck, everybody. He'll be fine. I feel like he'll be fine. Now, last night, and I, I hope that I didn't get this name wrong, but in a, in a Red Sox in a Red Sox game, Tanner Hawk of the Red Sox is the first major league baseball pitcher last night to toss a nine plus strikeout Maddox which is a nine plus inning complete game shutout on under a hundred pitches in one hour, 50 minutes or less since Greg mass himself did so on August 20th, 1995. So I always love when stuff happens in baseball for the first time. Um, Oh, Oh wow. Annabelle says something very, uh, actually a very good point. Paul Skeens gets points because he dates Livy Dunn. And if you don't know Livy Dunn, she is a LSU gymnast, and she is very popular on TikTok. She's very popular on social media. So, yes, he does get he does get some uh, points for that. We're still talking about Trevor Bauer, huh? Bauer just gave up five or six runs in his Mexico League start. Yes, Bauer is still looking for a job, and here's what I'll say about Trevor Bauer. I, I obviously the guy can pitch. There's no one, no one is really questioning that, but apparently he's been struggling as of late, but I get messages a lot saying, why aren't, why aren't the Padres going after Trevor Bauer? Why aren't they going after Trevor Bauer? He wasn't convicted. And in a vacuum, I agree. He was not convicted of anything in a vacuum before I get messages and notes Um, in a vacuum. He wasn't convicted. So to me, that means he's able to work again. But no team wants to sign him. And he did a video the other day on his social media kind of explaining things. And one of the accusers, I believe, is in trouble for lying about something. And so he was kind of highlighting that a little bit. But the problem with Trevor Bauer, and I guess he has no... He, I guess he has no... Um, no other move to make. He has no other move in this whole thing because... It's clear that Major League Baseball does not want him. And it's clear that Major League Baseball does not even want to entertain anything with him. But I think the biggest problem, and we've talked about this many times, is what he adds to the clubhouse. And sometimes you can add guys to the clubhouse and everything will be okay. But I think the fact that everywhere Trevor Bauer goes, whether he asks for it or not, News follows him everywhere. Questions follow him everywhere. And now he's got these videos online trying to, you know, prove his innocence once again. And I, I, I think that is why it's scaring teams off. I think that 
teams just don't want to bring that sort of distraction into their clubhouse. And that I can say is a, a legitimate reason as to why a team will not bring him in. The Padres, I do not think are a fit for Trevor Bauer. He might be able to help them win, but I just don't see him coming in with all of his YouTube shenanigans, not shenanigans, but he has a YouTube show. And I, I know a few people that watch it because he does give actual baseball advice and knowledge and all that stuff. But when you, when you sign Trevor Bauer, you sign a lot of, you, you sign yourself into answering a lot of questions about why you signed him. You also signed up for a YouTube show that follows him everywhere. You also signed up for people that hate him. And want to make sure that they, you know, they can hit that, that the team made a mistake. And that's not necessarily his fault, but he does make the choice to continue to talk about things that, you know, maybe were, maybe he shouldn't talk about and just let go, which I'm in a completely different spot than him. So I'm not going to ever say that I, I think he should just let it go because I actually don't know the full situation. But when things are over and done with, to an extent, because I know that there was legal proceedings like you just move forward. And I think people are more willing to take a risk on you if you've moved forward than if you're stuck in the same spot. B free says he says too much on his mind to play in the majors right now. I agree. Uh, SD Yeg is a little bit too late on OJ being dead. He's been dead for a little bit. Um, Brandon says, well, when you throw a ball from the mound over the center field batter's eye, when you, when you're being pulled out of a game, when he was a guardian, then the bad reputation will follow you. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Can you all imagine we got Profar for the vibes? You want to put Bauer in that mix? Heck no. He's cooked. I hope someone signs him so we can boost our run differential. Anthony says the accuser. It being sued now is not the girl that was in the news previously. Yes, that is correct, Anthony. Thank you for spot or thank you for uh, holding me accountable for that. Let's see. Yeah, Bauer, not 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 a fan. I I'm not saying personally I'm not a fan. I mean, I think you kind of know where I lie in this the whole thing. I don't think he would be a good fit on the team. But and he and I don't even know he is saying he would pitch for the major league minimum, but I just don't think it's worth it. I just don't think it's worth it to bring in a guy who may mess with the vibes. I mean, can you imagine if they bring in Trevor Bauer and Xander Bogarts never get to hit again? Then it would be the fault of bringing in Trevor Bauer. Come on, baseball karma, everyone! Baseball karma. Bauer eleven is Dodger eleven, is it? Is it? Anyway, that's it for the Bauer talk. Let's do this. <laughs> I just clicked it and realized the button was down. If you heard anything about Gwen and Chris today, you know that I was not very good at my job today. I couldn't talk, couldn't hit the right buttons. So I think now it would be time to do this. What's annoying Scraby today? Let's find out. It's time for the Daily Gripe. Diesel Profar is on with Gwen and Chris tomorrow. Not Ben and Woods. Is Profar on with Ben and Woods too? I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't hear that. But he is coming on our show. So. Oh, we're back to pizza top. talk. All right. My gripe today. <sighs> I try to come up with different gripes, but there's really, like I said, there's like four places I go. Work, golf, home and petco those are the four places i go so this is where i'm you know getting into issues but i've said this before and i will say it again when you have a double yellow line you cannot cross that i don't understand here's my daily gripe and it's not about driving and it's just more of a general thing but why is everyone just doing what everyone wants? We live in a society. I know that not following the rules is fun. I know that turning left over a double yellow line is probably easier for you. But when you're turning left over a double yellow line and you hold up about 20 cars behind you, you're not doing anyone anything good. Never. 
going to be good. Gonzo said he knew it was traffic related. But more so, I am saying people need to stop being so involved with themselves and kind of take a look around. I think I do a decent job of taking a look around. Do I get angry? Yes, I get angry. Rules are not made to be broken, Brandon. Dominic says, oh, Scraby, people today don't give a flying bleep about others. That's not true. We have the power to make sure that we give a flying you know what about others. Just because people don't doesn't mean that we shouldn't. I actually really do subscribe to that theory. Ever since I stopped drinking, I've thought about things in a different way. And that would be that I really want to look for the positives and things and not let the small stuff, not sweat the small stuff. Because honestly, the small stuff is not that big of a deal. It really isn't. Eric, rules separate us from the animals. Even animals follow rules. Just ask my dogs. They're not allowed to. They're not allowed to run off until I really until they sit down and I release them from the leash. Any, anyway, Reed, you're hundred percent correct. Jeremy, Scraby, man of the people. Anyway, thanks for everybody. Thanks to everybody for joining me tonight. Be back. Oh my gosh! See, I'm gonna go to sleep tonight and I'm gonna be able to talk tomorrow. I promise. Be back on the show tomorrow. Jerks and Profar scheduled to join us. Then it would start at six a.m. Make sure you're here. Padres, Blue Jays, tomorrow we'll get you all set for it. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you again for joining me for this gravy show this week.